So in this review session, I'm going to cover the lab topic of biotechnology. This particular topic covered one of the four different classifications of macromolecules, and that macromolecule was DNA, okay, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid. All right, so DNA is built, polymers of DNA are built from three components. One of those components is a sugar. It's called deoxyribose. One of the components that is used to build this molecule is a phosphate group. These two together actually make up the backbone of the molecule. And the last component of DNA is a nitrogenous base. There are technically four of these that we're going to be looking at in DNA. They are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So, macromolecules, as you learned previously, are formed when you perform dehydration reactions that create bonds between monomers, and this is no different. These three components existing in a single unit or monomer that will be used to build DNA is called a nucleotide, okay? And DNA, a larger molecule, is a polynucleotide. So a couple of other things you need to know. First off, DNA exists as a molecule that is bound. Or DNA exists, sorry. All right. So in terms of the biotechnology unit, we're going to be looking at a specific macromolecule that you didn't study earlier this semester when we talked about macromolecules. That macromolecule is deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. And there are three components that are used to build up these smaller units that we use to build molecules of DNA. Those are a sugar, which in this particular instance this is called deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and these two together actually form the backbone of the DNA molecule. And finally, a nitrogenous base. And there are four when we're discussing DNA that we'll refer to, and those are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Now, DNA exists as a double-stranded molecule, which means you'll actually have two molecules of DNA that are interacting. Okay? This outside region here represents the backbone. So it's going to be composed of sugars and phosphates. So it's going to be composed of deoxyribose bound to a phosphate, bound to a deoxyribose, bound to a phosphate, bound to a deoxyribose, bound to a phosphate, and so on and so forth. The rungs of this ladder, however, represent interactions between the two strands of DNA that occur between these nitrogenous bases. And what we'll find is that these nitrogenous bases always pair up in the same way. Adenine always forms two hydrogen bonds with thymine and cytosine always forms three hydrogen bonds with guanine. Okay, so what we're going to do in this particular lab is we're going to first isolate this molecule and after we isolate this molecule, we're going to analyze this molecule based upon specific sequences in it that are unique to an individual. DNA, just so you know, is the macromolecule that can give rise through various processes to all of the proteins that your cells utilize. So the central dogma of biology states that DNA is used 
to create a form of RNA or ribonucleic acid, which in turn is used to create or synthesize proteins. Okay, so the central dogma here states that a process called transcription occurs where we generate a molecule of RNA off of a template strand of DNA. And that RNA is then transported into the cytoplasm where it is translated that sequence of RNA is translated into an amino acid sequence that makes a polypeptide or a protein. So each individual in the world has a unique sequence of DNA and we can exploit particular pieces of this unique sequence of DNA. So first things first, let's go ahead and discuss the very first lab or portion of the lab that you performed. This was the isolation of DNA. Okay, so we're going to isolate DNA from a banana. So banana is a plant cell. And remember that because it's a plant cell, we've got several different structures in the cell that we actually have to get through before we can get to the DNA in the center of the nucleus. So we need to get through a cell wall, a plasma membrane, and a nuclear envelope. Even when we make it past all of those, the DNA inside of this nucleus is actually tightly wound around histone proteins and at any point in time can have various other proteins or enzymes bound to it, transcribing or replicating DNA. So we need to get through all of these layers, these membranes and cell wall, and we need to remove those proteins and isolate the DNA. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a banana and we're going to blend it. So we blend the banana and we add 250 mils of water to it. After we have blended the banana, we're going to add two other solutions to it. The first solution that we're going to add is soap. Recall from the macromolecule unit that soap is an emulsifier. We're going to use this soap to disrupt any lipids that exist in any of these structures. So by doing that, we in theory can disrupt these structures using that soap. and then get to the DNA. But again, remember, proteins can be bound to the DNA. So we need to use another particular solution, and that solution is meat tenderizer. Okay, so we're going to use meat tenderizer because meat tenderizer contains specific enzymes called proteases. Those proteases are going to assist us. They're enzymes that specifically bind to proteins, and they're going to assist us in disrupting the interaction between those proteins that are bound to the DNA and the DNA itself. So in theory, using these two solutions, along with the final component of heat, where we boil this, we should now be able to isolate the DNA from the rest of the banana. But there's one final step that we actually have to perform after this. DNA is soluble in water. So currently, as we have this, the DNA is actually not going to come out of solution. We're not going to be able to visualize it. So what we're going to do after we do all of this, we're going to take our banana solution, we're going to put it into a test tube. So here's my banana solution. We're going to add ice cold ethanol. When we 
we add that ice cold ethanol, what we're going to see are bubbles. Okay, within those bubbles, we're also going to see kind of a white cloudy mist or a white cottony substance. That substance is the DNA. So DNA is insoluble in ethanol. And because it's insoluble in ethanol, when we add the ice cold ethanol, we now can visualize the DNA. Okay, so now we've isolated DNA. We, in theory, can extract it from that isolation, and we can use it to our advantage.